Yeah, so first, apologies for not having a hybrid meeting this morning um, due to the fact that there was supposed to be a high wind. So it's barely a breeze at the moment, <clears throat> except in Richard's garden. Um, and um, but hopefully it will get stronger and then it will justify my cancelling it, which means I'm cancelling the organised visit I made for to the museum for, for this um, wonderful exhibition I got there of uh, drone photography uh, of the Iron Age hill forts in Wiltshire. Uh, this guy used a drone, has, well, it'll be there next time, uh, lots of, took lots of photographs with his drone and stitched them all together to make big, big pictures. <clears throat> and they're very good. I had a look at it the other day just to check it out and recommend it if you actually live locally. Um, but otherwise we'll go hopefully next time. <clears throat> Those locally. You'd have a hard job flying a drone today, I'd have thought. Well, it's not for today. It was, you did it years ago, I expect. <laughs> Having said that, my sister went to one of the other exhibitions and they were out practicing with the drone outside the museum. Oh, right. Because they've actually been out doing the hill forts and this was the, they were showing people how it worked, how they'd done it. Oh, that's interesting, yes. Hmm. Anyway, let's move on to our own project. Um, <laughs> But today, I asked you last time if you could produce some um, projects, and um, I'd be interested to see how far you've got. This is not going to be a, a, sim a single one-off. I think it'll be an extended thing because projects will take a little while if they're going to be of any interest. So um, I'm sure you've got some of interest. Uh, there's a, um, I know Elaine sent me this morning an email, several emails, in fact, one of which was her, a link to her Dropbox, and I hadn't, I mean, because I'm not on my own computer at the moment, I didn't know whether I got Dropbox. <laughs> and then I had to sign it in and all sorts of things. And it, and it sort of worked, believe it or not. I was quite surprised. So <clears throat> perhaps we can share that one first, maybe, if I can find where I put it. Dropbox. Is that the Dropbox? No, okay. that's not it. Uh, I've got to find it somewhere. Well, while, while you're looking for it, I, it, it, it is a project. Um, but it, it's in evolution because, as some of you know, I was actually rather busy writing a talk for Monday, which took me longer than I thought. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a go at this. So I've done two themes um, and both of the themes were to get to know my new camera, which I'm loving very much, Roger. And I've actually now got the plastic security thing, but I haven't stuck it on yet, but not that far. Um, and so the first theme was also related to the talk that I had to give. Um, that the members uh, chose on motion and I've never done it before and I thought well I'll have a go at water splash photography and I did it I just had one go it took me two hours I set it up in the kitchen because <laughs> I thought the water will go everywhere and so these are the first images and um, which Peter's going to try and show um, and uh, I don't know how good that quality is that's terrible that's well, perfect playing. to me okay it's not great where we are well, um, I, I don't, I can't remember how to use Dropbox to be honest. So long as I've used it, but is it I, can't see, I can't see an image. No, there's not an image. Pass on. That's yes, the title. No, it just, it just says report. Yeah, next slide. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to work out how to do it. Page that's down. A, that should do it. There you go. Well, they're not coming out in the. Maybe if it late. Oh, it, it's coming up now. So these are my first three images, and I well. Actually, I took 50 on the day. Um, so this was my learning curve. And um, I've had to edit because one of my learning curves was I used a black plastic bin as the background, which of course is shiny and reflective. So Peter, you'll be pleased to know I've done some editing on these, quite serious Hopefully. editing, because yes. there was a streak and a line and a scratch and all sorts of things on this plastic bin. So I've actually got rid of it, and I think mostly you can see. But then I thought, well, for the project, I'll put this, and it wasn't, you know, this is my first attempt at this, and I was just using the on-camera flash. So, of right. course, it flashes straight at the plastic bin and then comes back at you. I don't have any remote side lights or anything, but obviously that's for another go. Um, and I want, and this was just a practice, you know, hand handheld, hand-dropped, <laughs> try and press the button at the right time. That's and then I put these... And then I put these together in this series just to try to show, you know, my Satsuma dropping into the glass one after the other. And I rather like the one on the right where actually you saw the water coming up. Um, 
obviously yes. all different different things not on a tripod this was just a quickie just to see if i could get anything and i'm going to go back to this so this will be an ongoing project and then the next slide is um the last two if you imagine i mean these were all random order because it's completely random when the when i coordinated my finger and the shutter release with whatever was going on but i put them in this order um just to show the splash and that one certainly on the left at the back you can see how so reflective the back is um but i think my 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 next time i have a go at this i'm going to use something non-reflective and i'm going to try and set up a, a bright side light i don't have another flash gun so and i don't have any linking remote diddly doodos. So um, I'll just have to have a bright light on all the time coming in from the side to see yeah. what I can do. Um, right. I did tr I did try a wine glass, but that was a little precarious and I thought it was going to break. So I changed to this rather solid tumbler. <laughs> anyway. Okay, there you go. Next one. So the next one, I, I was out walking with my camera. And so I decided to do a project on pavements. So next one. And these are just pavements around my house, um, slightly with the idea of minimalist in mind, because that was also something we were doing a project on. Um, but just to show little pavements around my house and next, and then yeah. what happens to them. I'm well, just looking at this pic, these two, three pictures. Um, and the one on the bottom left has got these diagonal stripes with the sun sh shadows, which adds a lot to that picture. Um, the one at top left is a little bit muddly, of course. I suppose that's my way it is. Just wondering if you ought to have got closer to get a better composition. Yeah. To cut out the left hand part, particularly. Um, otherwise, very good. Excellent. Next, next one. And then the next one is a <clears throat> mixture of what happens as time goes by. You get your moss growing. <laughs> ah, yes. And this is literally just outside my house. And that is my garden path on the right with the moss growing. And then the next one is what happens when you don't garden at all. And then the moss goes really quite nice and the roots grow up through the pavement. Yes, and the cars grow on the pavement, up on the roads. And, and that is literally my car and the one on the right. So this is actually outside my house. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> well, that's, a, that's the idea. Brilliant. <clears throat> so thank Otherwise. you for showing that, Peter, because I tried this this morning and my internet was not up to screen sharing. Right. Well, that was, that was a quick so I don't that know was. if that's what you meant us to do, Peter, but that's, I'm afraid, all I had time well, for. <clears throat> well, that is the start of it, yes. You now need to expand it further. You need to go out whenever you go out to wherever you go, we'll take photographs of pavements, for instance. Yeah and add to your collection and make it a really interesting thing. Morning, Peter. Morning, morning. Have you eaten your breakfast yet? I've finished, yes, thank you. Oh, Walk good. The dog. <laughs> right, the hybrid uh, um, meeting has had to be abandoned. Yes. Yes. I, I read your email last night. Oh, right, okay. Shall I blur my background? It seems to work on like this. Look at that, yes, look at that. Right, okay. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I imagine somebody else must have done a little bit of a project already. <clears throat> well, I've started, but I haven't, I haven't finished, I have to say. I didn't, I didn't expect you to finish at all. I expected <laughs> you to start. I'd like to see what you've got so far. Any chance of that? Uh, not, a, not an awful lot, I have to say. Well, that's all right. Which is the beginning of a project system, not the end. Um, I've just called the windows and doors. Right. Fair enough. Um, Full screen. Can you see it? Yes, but can we have full screen? Oh, okay. Well, I just started sort of windows around Salisbury. Still not full screen. Uh, why is it too small? Yeah, it's full it's screen on mine. Oh, on it. So they got they got the thumbnails. You go to, if you go to slideshow at the top in the red bar, where it's got the white writing slideshow, in the orange part at the top. Yeah. 
Yeah, yes. Fine, Click happy. on that and then yes. go to from current slide. Or oh, no, go from start, from start. Go from start. There you go. That's it. Lovely. Now uh, you just use the uh, cursor keys, perhaps. That's better. Much better. Right. OK, now we can understand it. I like the font. Good. I, I'm, I'm going to change that slightly. I'm, I was thinking about that. I quite like the, uh, the, the windows, too. Yeah. Oh, ah. <laughs> what happened to the one right? <laughs> and that, that's about it. OK, well, that's a good start. Where's that in Salisbury, that last one? No, that's in Palmer. <laughs> all, all the rest are in Salisbury. I, I, I didn't mean to show you this one. It's just that I, I put this border around and I can't figure out how I did it. I think I must have done that in iPicky. Right. I, was, I was trying to put a board around the other windows and I, I'd forgotten how I did that. We seem to have, uh, seem to have, um, uh, oops, what have I got now? Lost track of where we are now. <laughs> Sorry, have I confused you? Yes, certainly. I seem to have got to Elaine's back rather than any other. I'll go back, that's better. I, I was clicking the wrong buttons. Anyway, thank you, Pete. That's pretty good. Um, so you're... Uh, Candidate for a nice one there. Just need to work on lots more windows. Oh, I've, I've got hundreds of pictures. Which... Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I just need to sort them out. Need some sort of theme with them. Like I do. Broken ones, maybe. <laughs> I've sort of sort. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone else got a project that they've started yet? Yes, I've got one, Peter. Right. Okay, Terry, let's have a look. It's not complete yet. Um, this is part, just part one. Um, Quite it right. take a little while for the PowerPoint to come up. OK. So what I've decided to do is look at focus stacking methods. Right. And I've started on it, but not got anywhere near completion. So. I'll leave you just to uh, read through that yourself rather than me read it. <laughs> OK, all read that. Yeah, it was quite interesting. They were demonstrating a phone on the TV the other night, which actually you just put a circle around who you wanted to get rid of, and they got rid of it beautifully. I don't know how it did it. Right, OK. So my aim was to get the first sets done by um, today. Um, I've got nowhere near finished because um, there are certain aspects I couldn't get out and do. So this is the equipment I've, I'm intending using. Right. If you've got any questions about any of the bits and pieces, please ask them straight away. Okay, fine. Right, so this is my first um, try. Um, and this was taken actually before the presentation um, that was done at Salisbury um, Photographic Club. Um, I. Uh, we got um, a an orchid for Christmas and I thought right this is ideal to get some macro shots of this because although I've bought a macro lens um, I hadn't really used it to its full and I want to get start I want to get using it to its full so um, you can see on the left hand side um, what I've actually done how I've taken the shot um, what equipment I've used and the settings that I've used and how I've processed it. One right. problem with it is um, it's not entirely in focus at that point there because although I'd taken six shots and I was focusing at different points, I think my first point was somewhere around there. Oh, yeah. And then I started going around the different points 
but I didn't come forward as far as um, I, I'm not quite sure what you call that on the orchid, but I didn't come for mm. as far forward as that. However, I'm very pleased with um, the photograph in total. Um, so that was my first actual real try properly. I have done previous macros, but not got as good effect as that. Okay, well, that's pretty good. So then I came on to, right, let's try something different. Let's not keep on going with that one flower. Let's try something different. And this little tractor is um, something that we bought for my grandson many, many years ago. And within the text there, you can see, I think I put down how big it is. Oh yeah, it's 55 millimeters by 38 millimeters or two inches by uh, one and a half inches for um, people who don't understand millimeters. Now, because the camera sensor is APS-C and it's 23.5 by 15.6, I couldn't get close enough to get the the one-to-one -one on the macro lens. So I had to bring the camera back a bit. Now, that is the final photograph after the photos have been stacked. Oh, no, 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 Terry. <clears throat> you said you couldn't get one-to-one -one because you couldn't get close enough? Is that what you said? That's right. And then you went on about something else which baffled me a little bit <clears throat> following that. Um, you talked about something about the size of your camera or something. I didn't quite oh, understand. well, the size, because of the size of the sensor, oh, that's um, it. Yeah. and the fact that the, the little model is bigger than the sensor size, there's no way you would be able to get one to one. Oh, I see, right. So you have to pull back a bit. Um, and I, I think it's about um, 0.41 or something of that order. Right. OK, thank you. So I, I, I tried to be scientific by using photo pills and working out the um, incremental distances Again, that I needed hot, for the depth explain, of focus. Can you explain photo pills to those who don't know? Right, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you on the next slide um, photo pills. Right. Is Thanks. the back wheel supposed to be out of focus, the middle of the back wheel? Um, that is actually in focus, but it's just that how the light is set on it. Ah, right. OK, thank you. When I looked at the individual photographs, the um, I, if I had of um, changed some of the um, blending or um, how I processed it from Lightroom before I put it into Photoshop, maybe the yellow might have come up a bit better and actually shown the, shown the center of the wheel. Thank you. So um, I've stayed at F4 and a third of a second and tried to keep my eyes on, kept my ISO at 100 rather than go into um, uh, something like F22 to try and get the whole thing in focus. Previously, when I've been using this macro lens, I've been using something like F22, which means you, you can't get um, a you can't get a decent shot um, at ISO 100, no matter where you are, unless you have some really, really good lighting. OK, right. I'll go on to the next one, unless there's any questions on what I've actually done there. Right, so here we've got PhotoPills. Now, PhotoPills is an app that you can put onto either iOS or um, your um, Android. And what I found was, although I'd gone into the app and the left-hand black um, screen is how I'd set up to get what my depth of field was. So on this one, it's showing the depth of field at um, one eighth of an inch, which is actually around about three millimeters. So that's how I worked out what my increments were. However, after I'd done all this, I then found that um, there was another way of, I thought, 
well, is that for a macro lens? And then I couldn't find it on PhotoPills on the app, but when I went onto my PC and looked at PhotoPills on there, then I found macro depth of field calculator, which shows um, some differences. So it shows that your steps should be 0.9 millimeters. However, I have achieved getting reasonable steps at three millimeters using this black one. So right. I think um, I, I, I will be looking at both methods again. Um, this anomaly, how it exists, I don't know. I was contemplating um, sending an email to the photo pills people and asking them why there is a difference between the two. I don't quite understand um, the difference between a standard 90 mil lens and a macro 90 mil lens. Maybe that would actually explain um, why there is a difference. I don't think there should be any difference in terms of focus. Well, I didn't think there should be. If they're but both full frame, they should cover the same amount of area, shouldn't they? Yes. It's just the quality of the lens for a macro should be higher. The resolution should be higher. Okay. Anyway, carry on. Right, so the next one. Now, I, I did some comparative shots. And although I've got the, sh the four shots there that I took with different lenses and using F22 to try and show that um, you may not necessarily get the full depth of field that you want, even at F22. Yeah. But you might not be able to see it on these because I can't um, expand them. However, after I've come out of PowerPoint, what I'll actually do is show you the four shots and then I can expand on them and you'll be able to see um, what is in focus and what is not in focus. Right, okay. So my analysis of that, um, there's a lot there to read. And what I was trying to do was trying to analyze whether um, focus stacking is the best method or whether um, I should use just a, a standard shot at say F22 or actually which lens I should use um, for any particular circumstance. Yeah. That's very interesting, Terry. I've, I'm, I haven't got a macro lens, but I, funny enough, I was in Wex Photography yesterday looking at their the, the Fuji macro lenses and uh, trying to see, well, how, how to use them. So thank you for that little tutorial. I, it's something I'm gonna go and look at. Well, you, you can have the, um, you can have a copy of the um, uh, PowerPoint if you want one. Oh, don't worry, I've been taking screenshots. All right, okay. <laughs> so that is the end of part one. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the um, four photographs um, that I actually took, well, oh, why is that, that's, uh, how do I get my photographs up, okay, right, right, if you've got that on screen now, no, not yet, oh, okay, I don't think you screen shared, right, Ah. Right, so I need to, right. Okay, so this is the first one with the 90 mil lens and that's an F22 and even up the top end, right up the top corner, 
there is a little bit that is not quite in focus. However, all around here, please forgive all the little bits of muck on it. It's um, but it did show up how good that lens is, and you can actually see the wheel nuts there, um, Rod, uh, Richard. That it is actually in focus. Indeed, it's just those um, nice contrasts there in an ideal world. Yeah. So then I used my 18 to 200 lens, still set at 90 mil, so that I could try and get a, a sensible comparison. And again, parts of it are still going to be out of focus. And I don't think that's quite as sharp as the 90 mil lens. And in fact, it shouldn't be because that 90 mil lens is probably one of the better um, <laughs> macro lenses on the market. So then I tried my 100 to 400 lens, again set at f22, um, and the minimum focus length is 960 mil. So I had to move a little bit with my uh, where my tripod was. But again, it um, it shows that even at f22 using that you're not necessarily going to get everything in focus. However, I do use that lens outside quite often when I want to shoot butterflies or bees or things without getting too close to them. And I do get very respectable shots without trying to get up very close with the um, 90 mil lens. Very good, yes. And this last one is showing the 100 to 400 lens um, on its maximum at 400 mil um, at f5.6. So you can see clearly that there's an awful lot out of focus there. But perhaps if I tried focus stacking with actually that lens, I mean, you look at the back of that tire and that looks re pretty sharp there to me. And up yeah. around this um, central area there looks pretty sharp. But when you get across to there, obviously you're dropping right off on the um, depth of field. Yes. Yes. So that's the four photographs. Um, OK, so that's it so far. Um, there are other stages that I intend going to. So it might be possibly two more stages because the next stage will be landscapes. And although I, many people say, um, why use focus stacking on landscapes? There is the probability that you might get something right in the foreground that you really want in good sharp focus. And you want something also right in the background that's in good sharp focus. But even at something like F22 or even um, F27, you're not going to get that or the light conditions aren't suitable to even get to that without going to an extremely high ISO. Yep, okay, that's fair enough. Um, I don't understand why you need focus setting for landscape because that, that- Well, it's something I wanted to try, Peter. Um, oh. I, I know some people who um, do actually use it for landscapes. Yep. Um, it's, it's only useful for certain things. You can't use it when, if you've got anything moving, you'd have to be very careful. Like if you've got water in the picture, um, it's not going to effectively work. Um, it's something I wanted to try um, in with um, the focus stacking overall. Right, okay. It's just uh, the conditions you mentioned are not that often gonna happen. That you want something close, very close, and something far away. But I mean, I have taken a, a big rock in the foreground and some cottages in the background, and I wanted them both sharp. Because um, when, when you listen to a landscape photographer, they always say you need something dominant in the foreground. Well, yes, but how close do they have to be? Ah, I didn't say. Yeah. Um, and normally, a, a, a small aperture will will cope. I think. True. Right. Anybody else got any? Sorts of projects with us. I did, I did the photo books I told you, Peter. Right. I did the photo book um, 
I, I can't show you that because I haven't got it. I haven't got it now. But I've not been well over the last three weeks or so and in mitigation. And I've had little motivation for anything apart from falling asleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I hope to. I hope things will improve anyway. Well, I hope you're better now than you were. Well, we'll see the, this photo book later on, I guess. It seems, seems to be taking a long time. You talked about it last week, I think. Oh, no, I've done it. I, I, I've done it, but it's, it, it, it's, it's, now, it's now with the, with the wedding people. Oh, I see. I see. I thought you were just getting it printed for yourself. Right. OK. Right. Um, printed by the... The, 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 co the company that, that it's all very efficient, I must say. Right. Diana, did you manage to do any anything at this start of this? I haven't done anything of recently, but I have got a project that I did a few years ago. Right. Right. Um, would it be anything to do with walking? No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Geology then? <laughs> no. Okay, it's to do with boats. Oh, boats, right. <laughs> Can you show us what you've got there then at the moment? Uh, yeah. Um, I'll do a shared screen. Perfect ruby, right. Uh, so. You element. should recognise oh. where that is, or In um, Alan Brilliant. might know. Yeah, well, I've, I've, set off, I've set off for sale from Potterheim several times. Yeah, so I was actually looking at the duck at the front and wondering whether it's a leading line or an implied line. line. It's definitely a leading line. <clears throat> yeah. So th this project was a few years ago. And they, so the project outline was to recreate the photos taken on our honeymoon 40 years later on our Ruby wedding anniversary. What a good idea. <clears throat> and so the background was the first week of September in 1978, we celebrated our honeymoon on the Norfolk Broads. For our Ruby wedding anniversary, 40 years later, we decided to repeat the honeymoon on the Norfolk Broads. And I would attempt to photograph at the same time of the year in the same locations and with the same poses. Not all the photos taken for this project will be shown here. Okay. <laughs> so the project tasks were to digitize the original slides from 1978, Right. Print off the digital digitized photos to take us take with us, work out exactly where we went, repeat the photos in 2018 in the same location, same week of the year, and the same poses. Look for the differences in photos between 1978 and 2018. Uh, due to changes in the camera and lighting on the day assess whether photos look better in black and white or colour and create a photo book of the project. Diana, were the original ones taken in monochrome? No, they were actually coloured slides. Right, okay. Just to get um, you updated, we've now had a 47 mile an hour wind. <laughs> yes, just gone through. <laughs> Not a breath of wind in my garden. This is here, I can tell you. <laughs> okay. So the resources and the equipment that I needed was a scanner to convert the slides to digital format. And the one I used was an Epson Professional V800. Uh, a printer, cam the camera in um, 1978, I think it was a Zenith rangefinder, but I can't remember quite exactly. Um, in 2018, I used my Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II, which was um, a lighter camera than my EM1. So I, I usually take that with me when I go anywhere. So the lenses I used in 1978, there were none. And in 2018, 
I used a 14 to 42 millimeter and a 75 to 300 millimeter. So this is a mirrorless camera. Um, so Photoshop for processing of images, maps, a uh, company to print the book and a one week boat hire. <coughs> Point on the so, lens, uh, Diana, one point on the lenses, if you can go back a mo to the previous picture, you see we've got no, no lens for the, your old camera, but you would have had a focal length on the lens you did have on the camera. Yeah. Which might well have been 50 millimetres or something. Yeah, it could have been. So it I've, been actually, I've actually still got that camera, but I gave it to my daughter and she was supposed to dig it out and give it back to me for this. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was that you ought to use the same focal length on your new camera, on your later camera. Otherwise, the, 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 you'll get distortions uh, mm. and the perspective will not be the same. I've tried this sort of thing in the past where I've taken an old postcard and tried to reproduce it with a modern view. And I've had to alter the focal length to, be, to get the perspective right and the height of the camera. It's amazing mm. how that can be. <clears throat> um, and I did get some pretty good at such so you could put one picture on top of the other and get the outlines exactly the same in the background as well as the foreground. Mm. And that's you'll find the difficulties. <clears throat> okay, carry I've on. done a lot of photography since then, so I was probably a bit sort of um, limited in my knowledge of photography when I was doing that. <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> and me, a youngster. Well, yeah, and a bit older than now. Um, so the skills I was trying to get out of this project was learning to digitise negatives and slides, photographic composition and lighting, camera techniques, Photoshop post-processing and creating photo books. So um, they're all going to be of my husband because these are the photos I took. So we tried to get a boat that looked the same. Difficult, yes, expect. And there he is with his brown hair and his grey hair. Oh um, so some, some of the windmills were under restoration. And um, if you look at the little window on each one, you can actually just see the two windows. And it is the same windmill. Right, yes, got you. And that was near Great Yarmouth. In 1978, it was a working sort of like area with cranes and such like. But in 2018, we couldn't even stop there. We, were we weren't allowed to stop there. Right. In 1978, we moored the boat in that area went off down to Great Yarmouth, walked down there, came back and the boat was dangling off a rope. The tide had gone down <laughs> and every, all the locals were laughing at our boating oh, skills. Okay. <laughs> um, so that one is the same windmill, one with a telephoto lens. Yeah, it's a bit of a sad state, isn't it? Yeah, so... Um, empty-handed in this one. Oh dear. But the location, um, I don't know if you can see the mouse, I think it was taken across this way last time, whereas oh, yes. uh, we were limited, we, we were looking at the sort of the round tables and things. Yeah. And the seat behind this water pump was presented to the village by Lord and Lady Summer Leighton for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. And the exact same chair seat was still there 40 years later in the same place with the same little plaque. Excellent. And then I tried it in black and white. Oh yeah. Uh, so this wherry, we looked, we looked all for much of the day looking for that. We'd just given up and then it came sailing along next to us. Lucky. So I had to get out the camera really quickly and snap it. Very good. That, I did that in black and white. Excellent. Yes. Um, 
we had a lot of trouble finding this church again. It's St. Mary's Church at, Ber uh, I don't know how you say that, Borough, St. Peter. So it, we actually found it at um, St. Peter's at Bur Borough Castle. And it was 10 kilometres further on. I see. <laughs> But I think they've cleaned it since the 1978 one. It looks yeah. much cleaner. It does, yes. And this, the one, the 1978 picture was taken from a windmill at the Burnie Arms looking down and you can actually see more of the water further, further out this way. Oh, yeah. And in the next picture, I'll show you why we couldn't go up there this time. It was all barricaded off uh, around the base of it, oh, yes. and the sails weren't on. Uh, looked a bit sad. Mm, yes, very yeah. sad. And then there's from grasslands to farming. I haven't put the dates on there. The left one's obviously the '78, and this yeah. one's the 2018 one. More cows. <laughs> Malt House Broad, we couldn't um, get off to take photos and reproduce some of them because we couldn't moor the boat there. There were just so many people parked along the edge of the water. But <laughs> these I did not take, well, for obvious reasons. Really? <laughs> And this is the most incredible thing, that the boat that we had in 1978 was called Bondi Beach, which is in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> near where the shark so, was hmm? last Near where your shark attack was. Um, probably. I was away walking in remote areas at the time, and I just the other day, and I didn't hear about it directly on the news. People told me about it, though. So the colour in the, 19, the 2018 photos was brighter and more vibrant than the photos taken in 1978, mostly due to the changes in camera and film, but also due to the sunnier weather in 2018. And the age of photo... Don't forget, huh? you're older, your last slides will be older and they will have faded a bit. Yeah, they probably did. Mm. Um, some photos were hard to recreate because of a tree or something else got in the way. Um, in general, the photos look better in colour rather than converted to black and white. But the black and white ones, when you made a comparison, look a bit more consistent, though. Um, yes, some places yes. were hard to find again, like St. P uh, St. Mary's at Borough of P St. Peter, which we looked at. St. Peter's at Borough. Um, most of the locations had not changed, however, there were different, uh, some, there were some differences like at the bridge at Great Yarmouth. Um, yeah. The locals that we met along the way were really fascinated to know what we were doing because we were sort of like posing and trying to recreate the whole thing. And it was actually good fun. They went back in 2018. Well, to the broad, Norfolk Broads. They were taking pictures. Uh, so I'm just telling my wife because she, she's from Great Yarmouth. Oh, okay. Does she <laughs> want to see the paddling in the sea? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll show her the video when, when yeah. Peter sends it to us. Yeah, it was, it was really quite good fun. Um, that's that was that I came up with the idea, and it was um, we just went ahead with it. Yes, <laughs> it's funny how name places change though, because I was brought up in a house called Edsel Lodge, Edsel, but it's now called the Lodge Edsel, not Edsel Lodge, which is what the original name was. Mm. So finding that again was almost impossible. Yeah, the problem with our church that we were looking for was it was 10k away. We were in, completely in the wrong place. That's amazing. Yeah. We looked at 300 around 300 pictures on 
our phones that night to try and locate the actual one, the picture of the actual one that we were looking for. I'm, I'm going to show you a set of pictures in a minute and I couldn't remember where they were taken. And I looked through all the pictures to see if there's any names on any of the shops or whatever. And I couldn't find anything at all until I got to what was apparently a lighthouse. And then I searched through all the coastal towns until I found a lighthouse that was the same. <laughs> it took me ages. <laughs> I'll tell you that in a minute. <laughs> right. Uh, anybody else with anything significant like Alan, maybe? Um, well, I've only got one picture. Um... Well, it's the start of a project. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. Uh, one picture looks like several pictures. Um, yes. Yeah, see... Well, some of, some of these are lines. Um, the project I was going to take. Um, I came across this. Uh, if I can. Uh, dear, hang on. Um, you can hear panic in the background there. Yeah. Well, the trouble is, I'm trying to operate on my wife's desk, which is an absolute bloody tip. <laughs> I can't move the mouse around for a start. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so I've lost. Miss my pictures. So, um, it's windier now, uh, Richard. Yeah. It's forty-eight point three now. Well, I can see trees moving now here. Uh, no, Can't hear as well. They're moving quite a lot, believe it or not. Well, they've all stopped again now. <laughs> not the ones outside here, across the road. Haven't. We're really sheltered here. Uh, yeah, sure. You've got a bank, big bank behind you, haven't you? Indeed. Yes. I'll need to give Maureen a shout to help me out with this. So All right. Well, I'll, I'll come back to you if I can. If yeah, I can okay. stop sharing. If um, you can stop my screen share. Done that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, Stan, have you managed to do anything by any chance? Maureen. What do you mean? Do anything? Well, you do take photographs, do you? Yeah, you know my situation, Peter. Okay, well, projects can be small and large. You know, it's the thought that counts, I suppose. Okay, okay. What about Roger and Elizabeth? How about um, have I done? Have you done anything? I, I explained just now, didn't I? Oh yes, I'm a, a very short memory, you see. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, when Alan's come back, we'll um. Oh, Richard, of course, may have something. Oh, I haven't got anything, I'm afraid, Peter. Okay, right. By the way, the the Monday morning uh, U3A meeting was quite quite successful. But when you when I got those posters from you, well, I mind you, I didn't get new members at all. But there we are. <clears throat> you can only do your best. You actually went. I'm not really in a fit state to go at the moment. I'm afraid. Oh, but we had about um, 40 people, I think. Oh, well done. Quite amazing. Um, and there was a, a man there from Bobby, Bobby, what's it called? Bobby Vance or something? Yeah, the people who put in the fire extinguishers, the, no, the fire alarms. Yeah, and Based. locks and things, yes. Yes, it's quite well known, apparently. Um, mm. Right. Alan's vanished, or the Maureen's vanished, I expect. <laughs> it's triple time tonight, by the way, so, uh, Spire members. At six o'clock, triple time. Indeed. Can anybody explain how I can reset my camera up on Zoom? Because I've changed from the 32-bit PC Windows 10 to 64-bit because I was having major problems with um, uh, sound and video um, previously and on checking through false problems um, it suggested that I ditched the 32-bit one and put a 64-bit one in however the camera aspect has now changed um, and I can't find out how to 
change it? it does, um, Zoom will help you on that. There are, if you go into the, the basics of Zoom, it, it says original proportions and things like that. Okay. So have a look at that. Okay, thank you. All I can suggest on that. Right. Okay, Alan, have you got any further joy? No, Maureen's gone out somewhere, so um, I'll have to wait till she comes back. We'll show you next time. Okay, right. -o. Fair enough. Do we do we want to stop for a drink or a coffee or a rest or something now? And I'll come back. No, Elaine says no. Nobody else says anything. Nice. No, I've got my coffee. Yeah, I've got my drink. Let's just call in now. Oh, I'll decline it. Go on. Oh, I did it. Managed to decline it. Ah, success. <clears throat> I have to get back to her this afternoon, won't I? Right, okay. Um, mm. Where are we? Oh, yes, I was going to show you, start showing you some things on my screen. If I can just get around to it. What have I got left? Oh, dear. I'm not used to this. Uh, I'll get rid of your Dropbox. What else have I got? Did um, you say that? She's that one. Just trying to find which bit I get to first. <coughs> I came across a thing called Neverwhere the other, yeah, today, which is supposed to be a thing you can't outdate. But um, anyway, um, it's not none of those I want. I'll tell you that. Um, what I want is this program. Yes, right. I'm going to share that with you if I can get back to that. This is my fast stone viewer site <coughs> of. A place called Sea Houses. This is the one I had to go and find out uh, where it was. Um, now this is, if you like, the way to produce a project. Now these were taken a few years ago, I must admit, uh, 2018 I think, <coughs> like your photographs, Diana. Uh, but I took these photographs uh, in this place called Sea Houses on the, why isn't it working? Yeah. You should be, so we, I went round the town and took lots of photographs like this as I went uh, in, the, um, in the style of a chap called Jimmy Wells, God rest his soul. He used to go round and round the countryside and take photographs all the time. <laughs> that was somebody we were with on a wet day, as you can see. So I took all these sort of photographs. Um, and I thought, well, I can produce perhaps some, a project from that. So this, as I say, is the little, little village of sea houses on the coast. And if you scroll right down, it's quite a lot of pictures, you see. Um, and these are all resized. I resized them all and turned them upright. This one's turned around. It was around the wrong way before. Uh, and that one as well. So it's amazing what you can see in a town. But Jimmy Wells is famous for going to a place never having seen it, and produce a set of 10 photographs in his hotel room uh, and present them to the club he was talking to that evening. And he framed them and everything within an hour or so. He was brilliant at that. And um, he used to bring with him at least a thousand prints, which he lined up the, the whole of the place where you were, the venue was. <clears throat> and he had all sorts of brilliant ideas uh, how to take photographs. Uh, such as, for instance, holding your camera on a piece of string and putting it on the self timer and then seeing what happened when you swung the camera as well as <laughs> the pictures you got were somewhat random, but it made a different picture. Then he would have another one where he'd run with the camera as somebody else was running. He would try to run with them <clears throat> and photograph them as he went along until he tripped over, of course, I expect. <clears throat> So that was another good bit of fun. It used to demonstrate in the room as well. So um, this was the nearest shop to a, a name on a shop that I could find. It didn't really help very much. Rotter's Family Butter Bakers. I thought that was a funny name. And I, I looked at this road sign here and it said the, the B1340. But, ah, that might tell me where it is. And it was in fact the way to find it. <laughs> so we have these little adventures. So that's one of my little projects I've got on mind. And another one, I should have a third one, what's happened to it? Oh, another one here, anyway. 
This one is another one taken on the east coast of, of uh, Maggie Hambling's statue of this shell mm. at Aldborough uh, in Suffolk. And that was a monochrome, um, actually, it was an infrared photograph. So then I took various photographs of the statue thing has, itself. So these are the ones I did for that. I've so, taken one of that as well. <laughs> but I took, I took all those of the close-ups, you see. The point about the project is <clears throat> to have um, a thing where you can get lots of photographs to assemble into some sort of interesting project. And I thought these these particular set here would be well worth it. So ten of those, ten of these I took from different angles. I did take more, I think, but um, it shows you can explore a thing with your camera. And when you've got a photograph like that, you can put it in Photoshop or even in Fast Stone Viewer and, and adjust the colours and other funny things. So if I uh, that did it right, if I adjust the colours here, you can then tweak, say, red. So you can have a completely different picture if you do that. Turn down the brightness a little bit. Change the gamma, that's a mistake. But you've got the hue and saturation as well. So you can get some really weird colors if you wish to do that. So you can see the before and after like that. So um, you, you could um, not just have um, um, the, the original photograph, but you could check the original photograph and do some controls on it using Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever you do, um, iPicky, and then use those as a basis rather than just having one straightforward click re record photograph uh, as these are at the moment. And I think that uh, it would be make the project more interesting. And then that you could got if you've got a project, you need to present the project. Now we've had some PowerPoint pictures this morning, which are very good. And I tried doing it on this computer, which I don't know much about. And I, I don't think I did very well. So I looked around, I found, um, what was this one? Oh no, that's not very good. Um, yes, I went over to, oh, this is, yes. Uh, can I, just a minute, just a minute. Let me get the sharing light, come on. Uh, it's not working correctly. Let me just get rid of that one. Too many things on the screen at once. Still not working, can't get back to you. Why isn't it working? I've lost the Zoom control. I can see, I can see Stan, so he must be there somewhere. Why oh, can't you see the rest? Uh, Zoom has gone funny on me. I don't understand how to get, get it back. I can get all of you on the screen, but I can't get the rest of the screen, which is very odd. I mm -hmm. can only see your um, up, um, icons oh, no. of the... Of the oh, well, I'm going to stop share at the top. Ah, I found it at last. <coughs> Sorry about that glitch in my brain there. <coughs> what was I trying to do? <laughs> Already forgotten. Um, uh, Ah. Yes, I was trying to go, yeah, I was trying to do that with that. Yes, I had a, I did manage to get PowerPoint on the previous computer. Um, and, uh, and here it is. Here it is here. So click on it there. So that was, that was how I thought I could start. But I don't know how to use it. I've no idea how to use it. I found, I found you've got, you've got some templates you could use somewhere. Um, Oh, there we are. I'll choose one of these templates. I thought I'll choose one of those. Uh, I don't know what to say that one there. Oh. No. Oh, oh. That was one I chose, that one there. So then obviously you click and add title. But then I wanted to add an extra screen. And I didn't know how to do that. And it says insert. But it doesn't say insert extra picture or anything. You've got to copy it and then paste it, I think, Peter. Can I do that? Ridiculous idea. No, what I think, um, what I think I need to do is use something other than than uh, PowerPoint. Peter, try going to the Home tab, and then it says New Slide down ah. to the right, no, I've got and then it'll come up with all the different options. Click that, and there you can choose which type of slide. 
Yeah, thank you. Yes, to yes. I, I, yeah, once I found it, it was all right. But I had I couldn't find it this morning. In, and in then from there, you can insert a text box, a shape. That's this is what I use for all my presentations. Yeah, right. This is a very old um, version. This is 2007 or something ridiculous. Yeah, same but as mine. I, it works. <laughs> and you can I change use... the background individually. You can reset all. What I did is you need to work in the home tab. All right. What I use instead was let me point to show you if I can get back to that again. Why doesn't that work again? Stop sharing again. Right. Oh, um, share screen. I was trying to get to. That's the one. Yes, it's all black on there for some reason. Yes, uh, you should see a screen here with um, this is Google Slides instead of PowerPoint, which I use. I've used quite a lot in times. As you can see in the past, I've used, made all these. And for this one, I, show, I was going to use Portfolio, which looks like that. It's identical, really, isn't it? Then I thought, well, perhaps. Oh, no. I noticed that, oops, low resources. And then I went to untitled presentation. And what did I get there? I had, oh, the wheeled and houses. Yes, I actually started this one some time ago. So I've got one of the houses there. So then I thought, no, that's not good enough. Um, but so one of these, the creative personal projects is exactly what we're doing. So I created that the other day. <clears throat> That's as far as I've got. But, but as you see, well, it's not quite true, is it? It's got some slides there. So, and then I went back to un another untitled one. Was that the one we had before? Yes, it was. Sorry, I have to apologize. It was pro properly named it. Um, ah, host hostery, hostery, to do with hostas. Um, the study of the dying hostile. So, I mean, this is another project I've sort of begun. So, if we should do that as a slideshow, I think we do it there. There's a new slide, duplicate there. Mm, that's not how you do it, is it? Why isn't that right? Slide. You can see what transitions and backgrounds and things there. Why can't I show the slideshow as a slideshow? Perhaps I'll do it with F5 or something, see what happens. Oh, yeah, F5 seemed to be better. Not quite. No, it's no better, is it? <clears throat> you can't have to do it, that's the trouble. Yeah, I must get that one. Skip slide, move slide. Ah, oh, excuse my fumbling here. Insert images, view. Ah, oh, slide, yeah, there we go. Anyway, somewhere sensible. So, right, this this is my effort on this one, just as a quick one. So, there we go. And I've got a transition there. Look at that, brilliant. Um, so, these are a series of hostas in autumn. A very slow transition I got in there. By the way, I got 10, 10 points for a, a, a picture, a print last Monday night at the camera club. Sorry, photography club. <coughs> yeah, you told me about that, Peter. Yes, I know. Have you, a picture, uh, of a, picture of a hosta. Have you got none it of there? The, none, of, none of these pictures. Have you got it there? Uh, I have a copy, not in this, not in this set. I just like the colours on these. I'd like um, to see if I'd just like to see if I would have given it to him. <laughs> oh right, okay. I'll I'll find it for you in a minute. Oh, actually, of course, it's it's on my computer that's in the in the in the mending at the moment. Uh, I'll probably could find it on the. Uh, it might be, it's a good find, possibly, with a bit of time. Right. Uh, so you see that the holes in the leaves and things. I just left those in. <clears throat> Salisbury Club was the first club I ever judged at. Well, you joined, didn't you belong to it? Uh, yes, I did. I gave you a few lifts at times, from time to time, when you, what was it, you broke, a, broke uh, 
What, what did you break your ankle? No. Oh, yeah, do you remember that? That was badminton. Yes, I know. It was it, my, my Achilles, Achilles heel snapped. Yes, I know. When I was um, I was teaching you all how to receive a service, and I leapt forward, and that that was it. Yeah, I know. Terrible. Has it been all right subsequently? By the way. Yes, it's fine. Mm, it's good. So, as you see, I haven't just taken one photograph. I've gone boringly over lots of others. I think I've got to the end. No. How do I get out of that? How do we get out of that? Right. Yes. Okay, so there were quite a number of pictures there. So that's um, one project that I've sort of begun. I have not really yet completed it. Um, this, I think there's one called our oh, photo album was another one I've started. No, that wasn't. That was that was one of the um, one of the port one of the what's the word portfolios. No, one of the uh, templates. I mean, so the template comes like this with all these already in there <coughs> on the <little> slides <coughs> for you to um, you know for you to have a go at changing. So there's nothing to stop you changing all these. Uh, that's what was rather different from from. Um, PowerPoint, the way that works, that leave you stranded, more or less. So uh, that was the idea of doing that. And I thought, you know, going back to uh, Hamblings, for instance, slide, let me just stop this one. Um, going back to the Hambling pictures, I thought perhaps I could show you how to assemble a, um, to do it from scratch, using these photographs as an example. Does that sound all right to you? Yep. Good. Right. Well, let's um, let's see. We need them in Google Slides. So somehow I've got to get to Google Slides. We need to select them all. Select them all. That's better. So they're selected now. How do I get to Google Slides? Back to back to here. It's all rather different to this. So um, if I start a new a new a new picture, new set, new presentation. From a template? Yeah, let's have a template. So find a template. You've just got to figure out which template to have. My big idea, perhaps? <laughs> I can only see a grey screen. Oh, I forget to share again. Oh, blast. This sharing of screens is such a tricky problem. You should see the beginning of the template gallery. We got that? Yeah. And so there are a few templates here we could you could use. So let's just take one. Um, well, we could try the one that we were looking at before, as it happens. Yeah, I think that would do. Clicked on it. What's happened to it? Yeah. Well, we don't want we don't want it titled like that, do we? You need to change everything here. I hope we can change it. So um, what do we call it? Hoster. <coughs> And then we'll call it in autumn or something. And then we'll just delete the rest. Peter, do you remember the time when um, you, you, Sheila, Jean, and our granddaughter, Sarah, went to Hillier, yep. Hillier's? Yeah. And you and you and uh, Sheila uh, talked talk to Sarah how to take photographs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She is now 28 with a child. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. Right, I've done the first page. We go to the second page. We need to get rid of all of those, don't we? And this, and this is where you need to find your pictures. So if I don't want that picture, what do I do? I'll go up to insert image and then we upload from the computer so i need to go and find those photographs i'd stored and i put them under the desktop just for simplicity so yes i did see houses uh, handling there was another one i had what's happened to it anyway here's the handling ones i thought this this monochrome would be okay to start with so if i remove this as well and this as well and then i can expand that he said, oh, he said. 
Mr. And I could put some text on the right, couldn't I? I've read about Maggie Hambling. And then we go to the next picture and so on and so on. So I don't think I want that at all. I think I'll delete the whole of that slide. Like so. And go to the next one. Uh, so instead of long reach, we could put Aldborough old, speech, couldn't we? If we can spell it. Aldborough. Same, same spelling as you had, Diana, just now. <laughs> But you had a problem pronouncing. Yeah. And then we put a photograph where that is. So we go off and find the photographs again. Insert, image, upload from computer. And we'll take the very first picture, I suppose. That doesn't fit in at all, does it? But let's just remove that one. And then the, oh, with a yellow background, interesting. <coughs> So it's there, it fits in there like nicely, doesn't it? But um, it's not square, that's the trouble, Peter. Or are you cropping it now? Oh, yes, I am. Does it need to be square? I suppose it does. Well, that's the only way it fits in. Put beach under Alderer. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestions. Like that. Yeah. And then we need to close this, this down a bit. And then we can move that one out again, can't we? I don't think I want the time on that on there at all. Silly idea. 6.28 a.m. Ridiculous. <laughs> That'll go, I think. Oh, go away. Some things are harder to do than others. I think you've got to press delete now, Peter, haven't you? I have done. What's this symbol here? Do not auto fit. Oh. <laughs> Um, right, well, if I shrink it to nothing, that'll do. You yeah, can't do that. Still read, still read it. <laughs> right, so let's move on to the next picture and see what happens later on. Ah, oh, there you are. Now let's go to the next, insert the next picture. I'll go and delete that. And I shall probably delete that in a minute. Let's just go to insert, image, upload. Um, that one? That's the third one, yes. Oh, it doesn't have to be that one, it could be this one. Just wondering which is the best one to go. <laughs> Peter, can we see some different pictures? We've been looking at these pictures for ages. Oh, terribly. So I'm showing you how it's done, not what the content is particularly. This is what you have to do to put pictures into a presentation. All this sort of thing. You need to label it and so on. Um, what do you call it? The what do you call it? Shield, no, I think. This, this sort of thing like that. Um, the content isn't is not important. What I'm showing you isn't important. The, the way I'm doing it, what I'm using to do it with. I mean, you could use PowerPoint, but I find that um, Google uh, sh um, Slides, as it's called, works pretty well. I couldn't. I can't complain about it. And I mean, when it comes to saving it, you don't really need to save it. You can just, you can, well, need to call it up something up here, I think. At the top left, we call it, um, um, well, we'll call it Shield, for want of a better word. I don't think it's called Shield, is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's what it now, if I go back to my list of images, back to back beyond that, yes, here, there's, there's that one I've just done. So you don't lose it. You don't actually, don't actually physically save it as such. So go back to that. And oh, did I not put a picture in the first one? I didn't, did I? I could get rid of that. I've forgotten about that. I suppose I could have. Um, just to try and undo those two. Perhaps I could put bits of shield in each of those. Never thought. He wants, one wouldn't think of this normally, I guess. If, if I can take that one to insert it. It doesn't really insert, does it? Uh, I think there's a way of doing it. But um, it 
continue to have to do that. <coughs> Same splot. <coughs> you could do, I think. Now I have to think about how that how that would be done. I don't think I've got that right. But anyway, you could do that with each of these three, or not. Oh, <laughs> yes, life gets tricky, doesn't it? Start again. And you could have the text on top of it. Oh, you can't. Yes, you can. I feel you can have that. You need to bring it forward, don't you? Arrange, order, send backwards. Hmm. Uh, another one. I need another uh, arrangement, don't I? Where's it? Order again, bring backwards again. That's it. So I've got the title and my name there now on the right. It doesn't work very well because the text is the wrong colour, isn't it? So we need to look at the text colour now, which will be somewhere, somewhere here. Colour, text, um, format, text, bold, colour. What colour should we have? Something bright and cheerful like yellow. One of these yellows, perhaps. That's better, isn't it? Okay, so that's, oh, I forgot the end, but anyway, so that, that shows you um, the controls you need to have. So now if I go back to um, where I started off, <coughs> it's still there. And if I open it up again, it will no doubt come back just like that. And you can then go to your um, view slideshow. And you can see the slideshow in embryo here. Oops, that doesn't part of my slideshow. <laughs> so press escape to get back to square one. So that's the beginnings of how you can present your project. And um, I think that for this particular method, Google Slides should be available to everybody for nothing. And it's very easy to use. Um, so, what do you think? Hmm. Not very different between that and um, the, uh, the Microsoft one, apart from that, is more general. Well, it's free, that's the main thing. And free, yes. You could use um, um, Fast Stone Viewer to do a similar thing, as you probably realise. True. I could, a quick I could do a quick demo on that. If I go back to, yes, here we are. If I just share that again with you for a moment. This is already in Fast Stone Viewer. And if I just put these, the controls at the bottom of the screen. Um, along the top, we've got create and tools and settings and things. If you look at create, it talks about slideshow builder. And that is exactly what you've used. So here are the pictures already. And you can add more, add folders, you can do all sorts of things. You can have a background colour of any colour you want. I think Peter, do you have to log into Google to access Google Slides? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Is that a problem? No. Okay. The only you problem can... is how do you change your name when you've got your wrong name in there? Oh, well, why bother? Oh, it says <laughs> SCC. STC? Yeah, Salisbury Camera Club. Oh, I see. Mm. In Google. In Google. Yes, yeah, in Google. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right, well, anyway, you just do all these things down here. And uh, then you say create. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> uh, it's in the wrong slide. We'll put, the, we'll put it in that one. <clears throat> we'll call it. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll call it. What did I call it? Keel, I called it, didn't I? I called it Hambling as well, just to make it different. <clears throat> so it's got, it produces an EXE file, which of course, if you're using um, um, things like um, Apple stuff, you can't do that, sadly. So it's created a slideshow and it's 1.7 megabytes. <clears throat> And with a bit of luck, we can see it. This is 
move this window away from the chair. Oh, I've got no. What does it mean? I know that's to do with being on Zoom, isn't it? Let me stop sharing and we'll start sharing again. Da, da, da. So then it should be here. So you should see the little little thing in the middle there, right? You've got two ways to do it. You can go to, you can export it. You can browse it, picture by picture. Uh, I'll get out of that. Um, uh, or you can pl click play, and it will. Uh, you've got a green square on the <clears throat> green square on that. Have you got a green square? No. no. Oh, that's funny. I've always had this green square, and I can't get rid of it, even on my previous computer, the other computer. It's got the date down the bottom right. Which I forgot to omit. So that's when I took the pictures. All right, so there you are. So that's um that's how you produce a quick one uh, using using a fast stone viewer. Um, so you have many choices when you come to this. I mean, sure, Apple have got uh, ways of doing the same thing, and you've all those like um, Diana, who's who's left us, I think. Um, she expert at PowerPoint. And can't so get a fast stone viewer on for a Mac, Peter. You can't? No. No, I know. It's booked. I know, I know. You'll have to use, you'll have to use uh, an equivalent, or you could use... Fast I use uh, PowerPoint. Yes. You can use Chrome, can't you? There's just the sort of using the Chrome version. Yes, you can use, you can use PowerPoint. If you want to use PowerPoint, that's far, perfectly fine. <clears throat> the thing is to show your, your project um, as a suddenly you can go from one to the next to the next. Um, Elaine is expert at that, as we saw on Monday uh, afternoon. Were you there, Terry? You were, weren't you? Yes, I'm sure he said something. <laughs> but Elaine yes, I was, had, Peter. Elaine had a brilliant, brilliant um, yes, it was. exhibition. Yes, excellent. Well done, Elaine. I have to pinch that for my, my class, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't come up with motion pictures today we're not going to come up with any are we <laughs> well, it's pretty windy you should have lots of motion <laughs> don't need to move the camera i did show you what it looked like it's like outside my house can you i did oh it was on for ages i wasn't looking obviously i must have peter, peter i found this one photograph that uh, i can show people if you're interested just looking at uh, richard's photograph at the moment a view out of his window a car rushing past it's a snow nothing moving at all apart from the cars no when it actually does it's also balanced it'll actually you'll see that the lane's <laughs> garden's pretty uh rough isn't it oh the lane's got one as well is she oh sorry yeah I'm, I'm not going outside <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, I'm not even going to open the door. <laughs> well, well said. <laughs> um, what can I see? What can I see? Um, Elaine's picture. I oh, know I've got it on the on gallery again. It's the only way. <laughs> well, my my garden, by comparison, is very very uh, poor. But, um, mm. There's something moving at the moment. I must admit, but not very much. Right. What program do you use if you want to capture the entire screen, Peter? Um, to capture the entire screen? Yeah, I mean, I've got a program, but it's, they keep wanting me to upgrade for about $28 every once a year, and I refuse to do it. Um, I'm just trying to think. Well, if, you, if you're on Zoom, for instance, you've got full screen if you go to full screen you've got nothing but the screen if you try that uh yes but i want to play a, a movie back what are you right. saying is go to zoom put it on the share screen and then but how do i get it onto a disc i want, I want what's on my screen copied onto a disc hard drive call it what you will yes <laughs> but that's not a problem is it yes what do you use to do it with? What to do video? What, what, what screen capture have you got? A video screen capture? 
um, videos. Do you want to, oh, do you got, just want to take a screen? Do you just want to take a screenshot of what someone's showing on Zoom? Uh, I want to take it, but I want it live. I want to make an MP4 file of it. Oh, yes, I used to, I have used, but I haven't got the right computer at the moment, Richard. My other computer's got disk hard drive problems. I in, don't know, really. Including my solid state drive, would you believe, Richard? Really? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to collect it this afternoon, I think, um, maybe, uh, and um, see what is it. Oh, that reminds me, yes, he had a program which I had never heard of called Crystal Disk. And if you, uh, it's a free program, and using that, you can see how good your hard drives are. They give it a, as a percentage. And my solid state drive is only 94%. And he said, oh, I wouldn't, I'd throw a, a one that, like that away. 94% of what? <laughs> of 100%. Instead of 100%, of it's only 94% of, of a good. Yeah, but does that mean it's losing bits? What does it, what does it indicate? I don't know, Richard. Well, I could show you if I could find the right screen. Uh, don't matter. I'll let you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's a, it's a useful thing for free, I thought. And uh, the guy just told me on the phone about this crystal dry, uh, crystal disc. And oh, there yeah. are 32 bit ones and 64 bit versions and so on. But it seems to work without any trouble. It's only a, a, a sort of picture of uh, a thing that just shows you. Because I've got six dr hard drives on my other computer, it, you, he, he switched, swapped from one to the other to the other. He said, four of them are fine, he said, but the one drive F is causing the problem. And drive the drive C, the solid state one, is only 94%. Well, so, so it's all very well saying it's only 94%, but 94% what? Is it other <laughs> bits missing or is it want defragging or? I don't know, Richard. Don't ask the technical questions. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't have asked. <laughs> right, well, that's, that's all I've got to say. Um, I hope that uh, was of interest and I hope you can continue with your projects. We need, we need you, you, some of you haven't even begun, really. Um, oh, you were going to show me a single picture, weren't you, Alan? I forgot. Oh, it was, yes. If you could do that for me quickly. Um... And then uh, if you can continue taking photographs in within a project um, <clears throat> that you might want to show. He's a nice boy. <clears throat> so you can see this chap, presumably. It wasn't, wasn't Hadrian, was it? Um, yes. This is the drowner. Drown, yes. <laughs> is that the day they flooded the water meadows again? That's right. Yeah. Yes, well, it looks a nice day. It was. It was. He shouldn't have knelt down, though, should he? <laughs> well, he was uh, just plowing through. He had to because he was unbunging the channels. Right. Okay. Where the water, wa where the water goes through there. Um, obviously, weeds and what have you get in there, so he has to get down on his hands and knees to uh, unbung it. And did you take any more photographs, Alan? I took a lot, but most of them weren't uh, of much good, but I may well add to them. Um, so uh, that's that's the uh, the start of the project. Sounds like a good project to have, actually. Yes. So taking okay. in interesting characters. Yes, indeed. Right. Okay. Oops. Right. Thank you. Okay. So um, we haven't. So we haven't really finished projects yet. I want you to continue doing that, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, we'll see what happens in four weeks' time. The next one being the 18th of March, of course. Okay? I'll send you the video today. And I'll stop recording.